Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you our homework station and homework space. I have a kindergartner this year as well as I'm gonna be homeschooling a preschooler. So this is our space for that. I wanted to have a dedicated area that could just be, you know, where they know where to get their stuff, that sort of thing. So this is what I've created and this is set up in my living room. So just to give you an idea, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know we typically have like a whole homeschool room. Now we don't. Now we have a small space in our living room. This is, I hope, what's gonna work best for us and we'll just see how it goes. So. so first off, this is kind of the overall look. I have two bookshelves, a table, and then kind of as you round the corner here, I also have like a six cube shelf that's next to our couch. So. This is kind of the space and right here is the main like learning space where they will be. So we'll start kind of over here with this big, big bookshelf. This is the main bulk of our supplies and our homeschool stuff. Here at the top, I keep the stuff I want out of reach, the paint primarily. So obviously used a lot in our preschool lessons, paint, paint supplies, and then here is colored paper. Underneath here, I have all of my kind of resource materials. So for example, I have a book called Montessori at Home here, How to Montessori Math. In here I have different like math curriculum type of things, the different things you can do with an abacus, different um, Montessori print shop like type stuff. So different manuals or things that I might use for teaching, that sort of thing is in these bins here. Here are my daily um, religion books. We will read these on a, every day. We do a religion kind of reading. So I have two books that we use in general for my like preschool. I would do the beginner's Bible. For the baby, I will give her this to look at while we're doing book time, um, just so that she has something to occupy her with too. Here I also keep my folders. And this just has like my, for example, different coloring sheets for their religion exercises that we would do, different coloring, other kinds of coloring sheets that would go with other lesson plans, my homeschool stuff to file, that sort of thing goes in these files. And I just keep it here so that it's quick to grab when I'm actually doing homeschool stuff. This is different than what would be on my actual desk that's in the other room. That would be more like my work files and things for the household that I would need to file. But these are specific like homeschool or um, forms that maybe come home with Isabel from kindergarten would go here. And then finally, if you know my old setup, I had like a wall calendar and we would do calendar um, every day. And because we lost our homeschool room, we're redoing a bathroom and adding a bathroom and it's just like a big thing, but we're no longer gonna have a dedicated homeschool room. So since this is now our space, I still wanted to do calendar, but we don't have something that we can put on the wall. So here I just have this and it is one of those like Melissa and Doug magnetic calendars. I'll try to link this if I can find it below. Um, and the reason I keep it on the shelf rather than hanging on the wall is because if it was hanging on the wall, it would constantly be on the floor. My one-year-old, my two-year-old would just constantly be pulling the magnets off. So I like to have it up on a shelf. On this shelf here, I have different kinds of like supplies for crafting and activities, that sort of thing. So here I have a bucket of stamps show you but it is like full of stamps and these little bins here I really like them they're from Ikea they're like two or three dollars per bin um, and they're just nice sleek white so I really like those but those are just stamps and ink pads I also have a whole bin of stickers so this is just all different kinds of stickers it has we have dot stickers we have animal stickers just any kind of letter stickers that you might think all different kinds because for themes I like to do stickers too so we have that there and then these two bins are craft supplies so just things that we would need for crafts I have pom-poms glitter feathers sequins all that kind of stuff spread out through these two bins because one just was not enough so I have two there here on this shelf this is like the main utensil I want to call it what do you call that I guess 
it's not a utensil obviously, but writing materials, that sort of thing. So here I have my shape work, letter work, number books that the littler ones, as they're learning the letters, use a lot. And behind that, I keep my sandpaper letters. I have both uppercase and lowercase that I keep here. We use these pretty much daily, if not daily, weekly. So these are used quite often. I like to have them easy access. And then here, if you saw my back to school haul, you've seen this, but I love this. We've been using it for like maybe two weeks now and it has been such a game changer. We used to use that thing. Now we have this thing. It's a container with containers inside. And in, the, in it, I keep markers, crayons, jumbo crayons, glue, you know, just things that you would need that the kids would need to do a craft that I can pull out of here and put on the table for them to use. So if we want to color, I can pull this pencil crayon box down and put it on the table and they can use it. Rather than this thing, which is what we used to do. I used to have like markers, crayons, all that sort of thing in here. But the problem was is again, the one and two year old would just come and take things out, pull out a whole handful of markers and drop them on the floor. It was such a mess all the time. I was constantly picking it up. I just didn't want something that I had to put on the table that had everything in it. So now this is my kind of caddy. It has my dry erase markers, my highlighters. It has bigger glue that maybe I would want to make sure I was supervising rather than like the glue stick. It has tape, erasers. I have pencils so that my five-year-old, when she comes from home from school, she can reach this shelf. So if she wants something, she can still grab an extra pencil, but my other two can't reach that. So she can help reach it. And then it also has scissors, a hole punch, and back here is our salt tray. Again, this is something that I will use daily, if not weekly, um, that I like to do for letter practice. So that is definitely something that I wanted to have all on hand. My supplies, plus supplies for my five-year-old, that sort of thing. Things that like I don't want my younger kids to get. And so moving down here, here's the view. I have four bins that little container and butcher paper. So butcher paper we use all the time. I wanted that easy access as well as this tray here. I'll just show you. I have shown this in videos before. I keep all of my little objects here and this is how we do letter practice. So I keep those here. If you have not seen this video, go watch it. And then at the bottom I have Flashcards. I have animal cards. I have bug and insects, vehicles, shapes, numbers, Spanish, alphabet, things like that. So if we're practicing a letter, I'll pull the letter we're practicing out so that it can sit on the table with the drawing um, salt tray, that sort of thing. So I like to have all this on hand and I keep it here on the floor, which is dangerous because my kids do like to pull these out and play with them. But that is why I keep the butcher paper here. This is too heavy for the kids. It's a huge, huge roll. So it kind of keeps them away from that. In these bins, this is our language bin, our activity bin, our activity like books and binders, and then this is the early learning bin. I'll do a whole dedicated video on what's like in these bins in a couple days, I guess. Um, I just think it would take too long, but just as an example, activity supplies would be things that we would need to do activities. So if we're gonna paint, I would need a smock. I would need a paint cup. If we're going to do shape letters, I would need masking tape to make the shapes. If we're going to um, practice our letters with Play-Doh, I have just a couple things of homemade Play-Doh. Have a video on how to make your own Play-Doh. Like you, I'll link that below too. Um, but bigger craft supplies that don't fit in those bins, like po uh, paper towel rolls, toilet paper rolls, paper plates, egg cartons. That's the type of thing that, that is in this one. In my language one, again, just things that are reusable in the language category. So I have like my uppercase, lowercase, plate, clothespin matching game, all different kinds of games, dominoes, that sort of thing. Anything language related would be in that. I don't really keep my printables for my themes. If you have seen my themes on my website and in this, these videos and stuff, I don't have my themed stuff in the language bin of that sort. I keep that with the theme boxes, but this would be the more stuff that we could pull out at any time to practice. In the 
activity book bin. I have basically our activity books. So I have like a tape, Melissa and Doug tape work. I have dry erase little things, dry erase book, learning books. I have wiki sticks. I have like a pencil case that has dry erase markers and stuff in it that the kids would need. I have scratch art stuff, like just like activity books, the stuff that if the kids are, tell me they're bored, I can go say, go pull something from that bin. So that's what, that's the kind of thing that's in there. And then lastly on this side, this bookshelf is the early learning. So I have all of our stuff for my younger kid here, as well as our early learning busy binder. And I do have a video on this. This is one of my most requested how to's. So if you want to know how to make a busy binder like this, you can check that video out as well. So that is where we keep that. So as we move from that shelf, obviously the kids will sit here. I've got two different chairs. And then here I have, sorry for the lighting. It's like a really weird rainy day here today. But I have a six cube shelf and on it, here I have just like a little toy that my little babe can play with while we are doing some schooling and it will rotate. So right now it's the rainbow arch, but I also might put some shape work boxes or another Montessori type toy there. I'm not like completely Montessori in this house, but I do have a lot of Montessori stuff because I do really like it. So in this middle shelf here, I have our Montessori spindles. This is like working on number recognition. So this is something both my one and two, almost three year old will play with. I will rotate this as well. I have different like hundreds charts or different Montessori other things as well. So this also rotates. And then here on this other one is the abacus. I do pretty much keep that there where it is. This is pretty much out all the time. I do like to have it on a cube rather than up here because since this is now the living space and it's not just a playroom, when someone first comes in the house, I don't want a bunch of stuff on the shelf. I just want it to look clean, sleek, so I have it down in a cube. Up at the top then, I have one cube for Juliana, who's my three-year-old that is preschooling. I have one cube for Isabel, the five-year-old, and then this is like the paper bin for them to be able to use for like their coloring stuff if they want. I have plain paper or recycled paper, like scrap paper they've used one side of and they still have a side that's good. I have coloring books in here and then I have like little scrap paper for different crafts or something they might wanna do gluing practice or cutting practice, they can get that from here. So in each of their cubes then, they have their clipboard, which is like the system I like to use. They can put any papers there, their to-do list, their chore chart, like whatever they want there. They also each have their own notebook, which right now is playing because we just got it for back to school. And they have their like, book or coloring book that's theirs. Right now, Isabel has her like, let's practice preschool type thing. Um, Juliana has her flamingo coloring book, you know, just whatever is theirs that they want in their little cube, they can keep in their space. The baby doesn't have a cube right now. She's just not quite there yet. We're not really schooling with her yet. Um, so she just will be with me on the early learning bin. All right, so then moving on to this bookshelf. Up top here, I have some of the more like Montessori math type stuff that I was talking about. So here I have our number rods, which we use, again, weekly if not daily. I also have our hundreds charts, things like that, just different materials that I need quite often. Upstairs in the spare bedroom, I do have like more overflow materials, but these are the ones that are used so often that I'm gonna keep them down here with this stuff. So I can rotate things, you know, once a month with the upstairs supply, but downstairs is where I wanna keep our, you know, usual use often type of materials. And then right next to it, this is Unifix cubes. Again, another great manipulative for math. We use these quite often, so definitely wanted to keep that here as well. This shelf is more of like mom type of materials. So this is actually my stationary thank you cards, birthday cards, things, envelopes, that sort of thing that I would need. Here I have computer paper because my printer is in the other room at my desk. Um, here is paper punches and stencils, stuff that the kids use but not quite as often. So I, did, I wanted to put it over with the lesser used homeschool materials. Here I have more stuff filled with resources that I will use, but not quite that often. 
So for example, this has like our music CDs and religion books and um, geography curriculum, stuff that I use, but just like not as much as the stuff over there. So I like to have these resources on hand, but that's basically the types of things that these are filled with. Here, just to add some color, and because it's an adult supply, so I don't want it on my kids' station, is Sharpies. I just, I really like Sharpies, so having a little place for mine is there. And back here, just for color, I have bouncy balls. That's one of those things that I don't like the kids to be able to get without my help because they're small, choking hazard. They love them, love to play them, but I really do like to supervise it. So it's more on like, display rather than to play it also has marbles because again another choking hazard so this is just something we do play with sometimes they love putting balls down the slide so we'll do that but I like to have them out of their reach moving down here in this bin I have a jumble of things it's a mix of extra supplies so I have rubber bands note cards extra staples, just things I wanna have if we need it. I also keep other math manipulatives in here because I do think it's fun to change those out quite often, whether it's with a theme or just to break up what the kids are playing with. So in here I have like our gummy bears and not gummy bears, our like counting bears and then like little cups. I also have all different sorts of eraser type manipulatives. So this one is like a bunch of sea animals. In here I have pumpkins, Easter eggs, Christmas trees, lambs, apples, all different sort of math manipulatives. So I keep that here. The other thing you can kind of see here-ish is the pencil sharpener. My five-year-old is really the only one I like to use that because otherwise the kids just like get all crazy with it. So I kind of have it over away from the main stuff, over and away and up above where they, my littler kids wouldn't get to it. So I do have it here though, so that anyone who needs colored pencils, pencil sharpener, that sort of thing can get to it. And then moving down here to the lower shelves here, I have a science bin. So this is where I would keep all of our like science kind of supplies. I have salt, baking soda, test tubes, that sort of thing in there. Here I have the lesser used craft supplies that we still use, but not quite as often. So like ribbon and twine are in here. And then I have felt and tissue paper in this one. And then on the bottom here is all of my trays, bowls, bins, something, whatever I would need to use to pull out an activity for homeschool. I keep that down here. And what I like about keeping it down here is that I use these every day, multiple times a day. So I need them, but they are kind of an eyesore. I don't have a cabinet or anything to store them away in. So I like to have them here where I usually keep a chair. I can kind of like show you. So this chair here, kind of sits in front of this shelf when not in use, so you can't really see the bottom. So I really like that. It just kind of like keeps this a living room being functional, but also aesthetically pleasing so that if we do have guests, it's not like school threw up all over and is taking over our lives, even though it kind of is. So that is basically our space i hope this is helpful to you to see that you can have something that does kind of look good ish at least i think in a main living space and it's kind of put together and it's a place where the kids can kind of work with me and isabel can come home from school and has a place where she can do her homework and that just is hopefully going to work for us so Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you like this kind of content and if you wanna stick around with me, give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next couple to show you some of those bins and for lots of other content. So see you next time, bye.